Chapter 2, it's a great tranquilizer. Psalm 2 said, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves. The rulers take counsel together against the Lord, against His anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. You know, they've got plans for a new world order. They really do. They have plans for an electronic currency where you can't buy anything without a chip in your hand or in your forehead. Plans are coming soon. There are plans to control the planet. They're, they want to control the food. They want to control the population. They want you to get a permit to cut your grass and cut down a tree on your property. they got plans to rule the world, folks, and it's serious. God's laughing about the whole thing. They're planning to build their kingdom. You've got to read the book of Daniel and see how this kingdom, how the, 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 tells, God tells the whole history right there. Nebuchadnezzar was the head of gold, you know, the nearly pure kingdom absolute authority, then the silver chest and arms, and then the belly and thighs of brass, and the legs of iron, the Roman Empire. You can read through all the book of Daniel and see the five kingdoms. Well, the last kingdom is where ten kingdoms try to get together, but it's partly iron, partly clay. It's going to be a weak, and it's going to crumble. And in those days, the Lord's going to cut a stone out of the mountain without hands, and it's going to smite the image on the feet. God's going to set up His kingdom. We'll talk more about that in a minute. It started by Satan tricking Eve in the Garden of Eden. He said to the woman, Yea, hath God said... The first thing Satan always does is question God's Word. Then he said, Ye shall not surely die. That's an outright denial of God's Word. And then he said, Eve, if you eat off that tree, ye shall be as gods. That's the same technique he's always used. Make you doubt God's Word, then he denies God's Word, and then he says, See, you're going to be God. Wow, I get to be God. That's what humanism is all about. Satan's plan's always been the same. Make you doubt Deny God's Word and then deify mankind. Tell you, you can evolve. He tried the same thing with Jesus. He said, Jesus, if you fall down and worship me, all these things will I give you. Isn't that what he told him? I'll give you all this stuff if you just worship me. He's a liar. He doesn't own it to begin with. And Satan always promises people things if you'll follow me. He said, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Jesus answered and said, it is written. That's all you got to do, folks. When the devil starts giving you a hard time, just start quoting Scripture to him. He can't stand that. But he knows the Scripture really well. He'll take half a verse here and there. See what he did all through Scripture. Okay? He'll take half a verse. You just got to watch what he's doing. So a satanic high priest, uh, Aleister Crowley, said that his demon told him the year 2000 would mark the end of the superstition of Christianity and the beginning of the Golden Age when those possessing the will to dominate would conquer and would ascend to Godhood. Well, guess what, Mr. Crawley? You missed it. And you're not going to ascend to Godhood. You're going to descend to worm food. That's what's going to happen. Satan wants you to think you can evolve into a god. Now, what you believe determines how you behave. That's always been the case throughout the world. The Bible says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of man and the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Philosophy means the love of man's wisdom. Sophie means man's wisdom, where we get a word sophomore. Wis soft means wise. More, where we get our word moron, means fool. A sophomore is a wise fool. That's the age where they usually think they know it all. <laughs> How many have been there before? You've seen those kind? Okay, yeah, sophomore. They pick the word very carefully for that age group. <laughs> soft means wise. Man's wisdom, philosophy, filio, the love of. Maybe you've been to Philadelphia, the city of brotherly shove. Or whatever they call it, okay. Uh, Evolution is nothing but a philosophy. It's not a science. It's a philosophy. It's a religion. What it does, it tries to make you think that we can take God out and put man in his place. There are some excellent books you ought to be reading if you want to get up on all the philosophy of man's wisdom. You can read uh, Seven Men Who Rule from the Grave. Oh, the philosophy of these seven guys who absolutely still, still govern the world today. People like Karl Marx, uh, Joseph Stalin, guys like that. Uh, you can read about the Fourth Reich of the Rich. How that some of the rich people in the world, I mean the super rich people, have plans to control the world. Yeah, big time, serious plans. You want to get more on the Council of Foreign Relations and how they are involved. We, these are all books we sell in our bookstore. I have people that get, get after me, brother. There's a couple of other, I think, good friends of mine that uh, they say, oh, you get off on too many rabbit trails. It doesn't tie into creation. Oh, I think freedom ties directly to creation. Yeah, yeah. Our founding father said, we hold these truths to be self-evident. All men are created equal. They're endowed by their creator. So to me, the creation movement ties directly into things like gun control, stuff like that. I don't have a problem with it at all. 
you know, coming from some country where they don't have our American roots, I can understand where they don't see how it fits in, but <laughs> sorry, it does fit in. Dr. Henry Morris has this great book about the long war against God. Now, evolution is the foundation philosophy for racism. How can you think one person is superior to somebody else? Some people thought, well, if, those no, if there is no God and we just evolved from apes, which are dark colored, maybe the uh, white-skinned people have evolved farther. By the way, racism's been around a long time, but boy, when Darwin's book came out, it's like throwing gas on a fire. Racism ex escalated incredibly after that. Evolution is the foundation philosophy for racism. Charles Darwin wrote a book. Here it is right here. It's called The Origin of Species. That's not the whole title to the book. They're kind of embarrassed by the whole title because it is very politically incorrect. I'll show it to you in a second. This book says, the origin of species. Now this book came out 1859. The evolution theory was around way before that. But Darwin simply made it popular. He gave them an excuse of how it happened. Now what is a species anyway? This textbook shows a bunch of different monkeys and says they're all different species. Okay, but they're the same kind of animal. They're still a monkey. And just because some guy decides that we've got you know, 12 species of monkeys here doesn't mean they're different kinds. They're still the same kind of animal. This textbook, used in Escambia for a while, shows the different, a uh, little more to the title. It says, Darwin's pub published his findings in a book titled On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection. That's still not the whole title. Here's the whole title to the book. You can look at it yourself. The Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection or the Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. Oh, favored races. Now, Charlie, that's not politically correct. Well, back in 1859 it was. 1859, we had slavery in this country, folks. Racism was very popular, even in the non-slave states. They didn't want them to be enslaved, but they still thought they were inferior in many cases. Darwin thought natives were just advanced animals. Darwin said in uh, the book Descent of Man, another book he wrote, he said, at some future period, not very distant as measured by centuries, the civilized races of man will almost certainly exterminate and replace the savage races throughout the world. Now, if a professor said that today, how long would he keep his job? By the way, you ought to go read the old newspapers. I mean, like a hundred years ago, and see how they talked about the Indians as being savages. They always referred to them as savages, like they're inferior somehow. Darwin said in his book, Thus, from the war of nature, from famine and death, the most exalted object we are capable of conceiving, the production of higher animals, directly follows. See, Darwin's philosophy was messed up. He thought the more war, the more famine, the more death you have, the faster things evolve. The question is really very simple. Did man bring death into the world? Or did death bring man into the world? Could not be more opposite. Darwin's philosophy says death brought man into the world. Now, you have to understand, in 1859, when this book came out, slavery was legal in many parts of the world. By the way, there's still slavery going on today in many parts of the world. Okay? Negroes were bought and sold like cows. You owned them like property. You could do with them as you please. They had absolutely no rights. Now, Henry Fairfield Osborne, who was the curator at the American Museum of Natural History, said, the standard of intelligence of the average adult Negro is similar to that of the 11-year-old youth of the species Homo sapien. He's trying to get across the idea that Negroes are a different species, isn't he? Uh, that's racism. Stephen Gould admitted, biological arguments for racism may have been common before 1850, but they increased by orders of magnitude following the acceptance of evolution theory. Thomas Huxley was the guy who promoted Darwin all over the country. Darwin wrote his book and went and hid. Huxley went out and really preached Darwin and made people accept what he said. Huxley said, No rational man, cognizant of the facts, believes that the average Negro is the equal, still less the superior, of the white man. These are the guys who promoted Darwin. Uh, a guy named Kingsley, who was an Anglican priest who really promoted Darwin, also, you know, if it hadn't been for the church accepting Darwin in the 1850s and 60s, the scientists rejected it at first. They said, What a dumb theory. It was the Christians that accepted it. Kingsley said, The black people of Australia, exactly the same race as the African Negro, cannot take in the gospel. They can't get saved. 
He said, All attempts to bring them to a knowledge of the true God have as yet failed utterly. Poor brutes in human shape, they must perish off the face of the earth. They're inferior species. Brother, I was working in Longview, Texas at a church there. I was out two in the morning going to the store to get my wife some milk or something. I forget what it was. and get one of the babies something at that time. And some guy had gotten drunk and he turned his car what he, down what he thought was a street, but it was a railroad track. He drove about, you know, 30 feet and the car bottomed out and he stuck on the tracks, you know. And he's standing out there looking at his car. What, what, what happened here, you know. He's drunk. And so I stopped to go see what I could do to help. And another guy stopped. And we're pushing this car back off the railroad tracks before a car comes along and turns it into a tin can, you know. And uh, this guy said, what are you doing out here in the middle of the night? It was an all-black neighborhood, right by the big ghetto housing project there. I said, oh, I, well, I came by here to see if any of my friends are up because I, I know a bunch of people here in the housing project in the, in the ghetto here, and uh, I bring a lot of these folks to church. He said, you bring them to church? I said, yeah, I drive a bus, come in here every Sunday, bring a lot of them to church. 